Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition's top stories. A delegation from U.S. government's development finance institution is exploring investment opportunities in St. Lucia. The commercial division of the High Court has recorded another successful year. The educational notes from St. Lucia Jazz linger across the island. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports and the NTN Nouvelle are going on. A high-level delegation from the Overseas Private Investment Corporation, OPIC, the United States government's development finance institution, is in St. Lucia on official business. This visit stems from the meeting Prime Minister Honorable Alan Shastney attended with U.S. President Donald Trump on March 22nd to discuss trade, energy investment and security. The delegation is here with the purpose of exploring investment opportunities in energy and other critical sectors. Janelle Novel reports. Accompanied by Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Shastney and Cabinet Ministers, the delegation visited specific sites earmarked for development, including the proposed site for the Southern Port in View Fort, the Castries Port, and the Kalisak Bay. General Manager of Buckeye Terminal Glenda Duvalis and the Buckeye team have commenced the development of Kalisak with a beach beautification project at the Cicero Beach. I've been looking for a project since I got here to be able to give to the community. And when I saw this beach, I, when I saw the beach, I saw people actually swimming on the beach from the community, and it was terrible. It's just messy. I was scared people were going to get hurt on the pipes. So uh, I said, what is it going to take to get it cleaned up and make it beautiful for the community? And with a lot of hard work from the employees from the Buckeye Tournament, we did this all the work ourselves. This is what we came up with. And we're looking to expand on this project and beautify more beaches across St. Lucia. So uh, look for us to be around putting up picnic tables and volleyball courts. The project encompassed a volleyball court, a small goal soccer pitch, and a concrete cricket pitch for sports enthusiasts. Picnic goers were gifted eight outdoor concrete tables and seats, along with two barbecue pits. The beach has also been equipped with toilet facilities and receptacle bins. Buckeye Terminal's operations manager, Hubert Pamphil, provided insight into the inception of the project. 2017, the director at the time moved on, moved on to bigger and better things. And Glenda, who had been to the island for Buckeye on previous trips, gladly accepted the offer to work on the island. And um, I was driving her back from this hill you see there to her office. And she looked to the left and saw this beach all messy with old tires and steel. And she said, who owns this beach? I said, Buckeye owns the land. And then I explained the rule of law where the Queen's chain is concerned. And um, she said, this is a beautiful beach. We need to clean it up and make it look nice. As a matter of fact, why not make it a community project? And that was the brainchild. That's how it started. The project commenced in 2017 and was completed just in time for St. Lucia's 40th independence anniversary. For the Government Information Service, I am Janelle Norville. The Commercial Division of the Registry of the High Court has been in operation from January 19, 2016. The Commercial Court has reported a steady increase in the number of filings over the last three years, from 44 cases in 2016 to 100 cases in 2018. The division believes this success will boost St. Lucia's economic growth and development by increasing investor confidence to embark on new ventures because of the efficiency of the justice system. More from Glenn Simon. The National Competitiveness and Productivity Council has been instrumental in undertaking a number of reforms which has led to increased efficiency and competitiveness in the economy. In 2014, under the ease of doing business agenda, there was a need to reform the settlement of commercial disputes in St. Lucia. Thus, the NCPC was given the lead role in the establishment of the commercial court. Director of the NCPC, Fiona Hingson, explained the impact of the court in a short space of time. From a finance perspective, we have observed that significant amount of funds have been freed up due to the quicker settlement of disputes. We also observed that um, the settlement of disputes, which is measured by the um, enforcement of contract indicator, this has led to an improvement for the World Bank is of doing business ranking for St. Rocha. Former Registrar of the High Court, Sharon Gardner Hippolyte, stated that prior to the establishment of the Commercial Court, matters of a commercial nature fell in a queue in order of priority. 
alongside divorce cases, land disputes, adoption, probate cases, traffic matters, and the like. The whole point of this court was to be able to take these matters out and to give them separate priority. And this, I think, has augured well for the business community. I was looking at the statistics for the last couple of years and we have grown tremendously from 44 cases being filed the first year to 83 or 6, I think, the second year. And then last year we filed over 100 cases. She noted, this figure gets even more impressive when expressed in terms of the dollar value, which goes through the court. From the 44 cases filed in 2016, over EC $7 million went through the court, while in 2017, with 84 cases filed, this figure was just under 50 million EC dollars. This year, well, not this year, 2018, the figure was over a hundred million dollars. And when you think that a hundred million dollars is going through a court that has been there for three years, you think, wow, we really are delivering a quality of service that has allowed for the unit to be able to grow, that has inspired confidence in persons to be able to file their claims there and to realize that judgment is being given in a speedily fashion. A legal officer is now attached to the commercial division to assist the judge in delivering decisions in a timely fashion. The former registrar pointed out that matters are usually dealt with within a 14 to 21 day period, with judgments being delivered between three to six months. This type of positive results builds investor confidence and is a very positive impact on the ease of doing business climate for St. Lucia. For the National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, Glenn Simon reporting. St. Lucia on Wednesday, 22nd May, joined the global community in observing the 26th anniversary of International Day for Biological Diversity. The observance brings focus to biodiversity as a foundation for transforming food systems and improving human health. The United Nations proclaimed May 22nd as the International Day for Biological Diversity to help increase understanding and awareness of biodiversity issues. This year's observation is being held under the theme, Our Biodiversity, Our Food, Our Health. St. Lucia's focal point for the Convention on Biological Diversity is the Department of Sustainable Development within the Ministry of Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development. The minister responsible for that portfolio, the Honorable Dr. Gail Rigobert, noted the crucial role that plants, animals and microorganisms play in providing sources of food and medicines for millions of people around the world. The Agriculture Minister, Honorable Ezekiel Joseph, agrees. Sustaining the balance of biodiversity, that is the plant, animals and microorganisms within our environment, ensures a sustainable food source, healthy water supply, and the preservation of our resources for future generations. My ministry has taken steps to diversify our agricultural production and create niche products which support and complement our tourism product. Activities for International Day for Biological Diversity 2019 kicked off with a community education and sensitization campaign to raise awareness of the preparation of the sixth national report detailing the status of the country's biodiversity and to highlight St. Lucia's progress towards meeting national conservation targets. According to the Agriculture Minister, St. Lucia is currently focusing on seven key crops which, when used correctly, can result in self-sufficiency and sustainability within the country's agricultural sector. As we observe our 26th anniversary as a party to the Convention on Biological Diversity, under the theme, our biodiversity, our food, our health, I challenge you to explore ways in which you can do your part to conserve and protect our unique biodiversity. The Department of Sustainable Development will continue to collaborate with local and regional partners to raise awareness of International Day for Biological Diversity through a biodiversity lecture series during the week of May 22nd and a food and health fair in collaboration with the OECS Secretariat.
And this is the NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next. The world's climate is changing, and that affects all of us. Storms are becoming increasingly intense. Periods of intense drought and heavy rain stress farm animals and destroy our crops. Higher average ocean temperatures kill our coral reefs and change the migratory patterns of fish. St. Lucia contributes only 0.0015% of global greenhouse gas emissions, but is doing its part, along with countries around the world, to reduce the emissions that are warming our world and changing our climate. These efforts are called mitigation. But decades of emissions have already changed the climate and the greenhouse gases in the atmosphere today will increase average global temperatures even more. We need to adapt, that is, do everything we can to prepare for and respond to the actual and expected negative effects of climate change. And everyone has a role to play. We need to protect our crops, build homes that withstand storms, and keep our drains and waterways free of garbage to help us recover or bounce back from climatic events. Learn more about the Government of St. Lucia's National Adaptation Plan and the steps you can take to protect yourself and your fellow St. Lucians. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Welcome once again to your update on youth development and sports on the NTN Nightly News. I'm Ryan O'Brien. The secondary school's under-15, 40-overs cricket tournament continued on Tuesday, May 21st, with four completed matches. At the Grosile playing field, Castries Comprehensive Secondary defeated Vidbutai Secondary by 16 runs. Castries Comprehensive Secondary batting first, made 203 for 9 in the allotted 33 overs, with Joshua Sipal leading the scoring with 51, with 7 fours, Vishal Singh 37, and Jaban Emelian, 20. Bowling for Vidbutai Secondary, Meki Stanislaus took 3 for 27, and Nikel Leo, 2 for 49. In reply, Vidbutai Secondary dismissed 487 in the 32nd over, with Kalij Duplessis making a defiant 72, and Dante Paul, 11. Jidel Lui was the chief destroyer for Castries Comprehensive, picking up 6 for 17 with his leg spin. He was supported by Vishal Singh with two wickets. At the when playing field in Monipo, Antipo Secondary totally outplayed Miko Secondary, winning that encounter convincingly by 237 runs, thanks to an outstanding all-round game by Runet Island's under-15 player Royce Paul and steady bowling by Runet Island's female player Xavier James. Antipo Secondary batting first made 251 with Royce Paul top scoring at 68 and Christian Cade making 56. The wicket takers for Miku Secondary were Kervon Edward, with four wickets, Elijah Charles, three wickets, and Alexis Charles, two wickets. In reply, Miku Secondary had no answer to the offspin of Royce Paul, who finished with standout figures of seven wickets per three runs in four overs, and left arm seamer Zayda James, three for 11, as Miku Secondary had only managed 14 all out in seven overs. At the Larry Suits playing field in the Mabuya Valley, Granivier Secondary defeated Clendon Mason Memorial Secondary by 30 runs. Granivier Secondary batting first made 94 in 15.3 overs, with Naquan Henry making 17. Bowling for Clendon Mason Memorial, Verquan Estefan took 3 for 28, Catron Rigobert 2 for 8, Kelly Demar 2 for 12, and Curlin Severed 2 for 19. In reply, Clendon Mason Memorial dismissed for 64 in 16.2 overs, with Curlin Severed making 16. Bowling for Granivier Secondary, Joshua Fletcher, playing 3 for 10, Theo Edward, 3 for 15, and Jelani Joseph, 2 for 15. Another PI playing field, Sufre Comprehensive Secondary, defeated PI Secondary by 172 runs. Sufre Comprehensive batting first made 267 for 7 in their 35 overs, with Kevin Gassi top scoring of 61, Vibert Sylvester, 35, and 33 each to John Modest, and Riga Alfred. Bowling for PI Secondary, Issa Henry took two wickets for 21 runs and Josh Monero two for 31. In reply, PI Secondary bowled out for 95 in 19.4 overs with Eden Brown 13, the only batsman to reach double figures. Bowling for Sufre Comprehensive Secondary, Caleb James picked up two for eight, John Modest two for 21 and Kevin Gassi two for 28. 
the collaboration between the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, the Ministry of Education, and the St. Lucia Football Association has paid huge dividends for the development of female football in St. Lucia. That's the view of Cyrus Sipal, Education Officer for District 1. Mr. Sipal made the comments after witnessing the finals of the Inter-District Primary Schools football tournament held at the Saab playing field recently. Mr. Cooper did um, pledge his support that this will be, um, in the first instance, a four-year um, sponsorship program. And then um, Ministry of Sports and Ministry of Education, we do value this partnership and understand that if we cannot do it on our own. There are a number of things that we may want to do, but we cannot do it on our own. So, so we do value this partnership with the Football Association and then we will grab the opportunity to ensure that our students are given the opportunity, they, they are given the, the time for them to shine, and then from there, we can develop their skills and, as I said, prepare them for the future. The St. Lucia Football Association has assured both ministries that this initial collaboration will extend over four years. An entirely new executive now serves the Babano Youth and Sports Council after an election process at the Community Multipurpose Center on Saturday. Incoming President of the Babano Youth and Sports Council, Junior Delis, has committed to building effective community partnerships for youth development. This pledge, made shortly after he and six others were elected to serve on the Council's executive. His deputies, first and second Vice President, are Amari Arthur and Sherwin Alexander, respectively. General Secretary, Neil Francis, Treasurer Neil Marius, Assistant Secretary Treasurer Kayana John, and Public Relations Officer Dissi and Clement. Before casting their votes, representatives raised concerns and desires for youth development in their community. The new president explained how he would address these matters. Well, one of the things we want to look at is the holistic development of individuals. As you know, in Babano, we possess a lot of talent. But for our talent to take it to the next level, we need to develop some of those young persons. We also need to empower the households. Because if a household is empowered, you cannot get the maximum potential from it. It's obvious that Babono stands out. What we want to do to take it to the next level is to take the talent that we have, especially the young sportsmen, and empower them. Immediate past president, Bersha Ogis, who did not seek re-election, expressed her confidence in the council's newly elected team led by Delis. So the leader that they have um, been able to vote for in today, which is Junior Delis, um, he has been a youth advocate for years. I remember when he came to live in Babono, he had that whole conception that, you know, youth work is done, I'm done. And for me, being a teacher, and I, and I always say that, being a teacher, you're able to actually gather much more within the school. And I felt it was necessary as a past president to bring him on board as a volunteer on my council. And I'm proud today to state that I'm reaffirming that his responsibility in youth work is not done today shared great testimony of that so he being the leader of that new force and we have persons that are 18 persons who are suffer and i mean these are fresh minds these are the type of persons that we want to really come in within the community and see the change that they want to see saturday's election was preceded by a youth forum where babano's youth were engaged in activities that covered topics including team building community volunteerism leadership and the frameworks that support youth work in St. Lucia. In my view, today was pretty much successful. Um, we started off with the youth symposium where we brought in um, a few presenters. Um, namely, we had Patrick uh, Mathre, who's attached to the Ministry of Youth and Sports. He spoke about the history of the NYC, and more so, he actually had a presentation on leadership. Um, basically, um, speaking about it and how they now can be sort of a leader within their own community. And we also had um, Ms. Esteva Satash from the Volunteer St. Lucia chapter, which spoke on vol volunteerism. National Youth Council General Secretary Ray Jan Montout also briefed the attendees prior to the election on the roles and responsibilities of each executive post. He says the Babano Council recently struggled with cohesion within its executive. After Saturday's Youth Forum, he's optimistic this will be a thing of the past.
What we have noticed specifically towards the Barbono Youth and Sports Council, it's been a difficult process because we're dealing with not only persons of different personalities, but persons who come from very different communities within Barbono. The council also, and this is a problem we're seeing across different branches, we on the National Youth Council and have sometimes have to come into different councils and try to, um, how should I say, dissolve certain personal issues that may come about in, in the councils. But so far, from what I'm seeing, and especially the different workshops that have gone before me, I think that we should probably see a difference in this new council. Saturday's election was facilitated by the National Youth Council and the Ministry of Youth Development and Sport. The new Babano Youth and Sports Council will serve a two-year term in office. That's your update on Youth Development and Sports for today. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. The curtains have come down on St. Lucia Jazz 2019, but the sustaining of interest in the music art form continues with a donation of instruments to the St. Lucia School of Music and Marsha's Sacred Heart Youth Orchestra. Here's Anissa Antoine. To celebrate the culmination of the 2019 St. Lucia Jazz Music Program, events company St. Lucia and an employee of long-standing sponsor of the St. Lucia Jazz Festival, Steinway and Sons, have partnered to gift participants in the program with two musical instruments. The St. Lucia School of Music received a Roland Phantom X8 action keyboard and the Masha Sacred Heart Youth Orchestra received an acoustic guitar. Minister in the Ministry of Tourism, Information and Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries with responsibility for Culture and Creative Industries, Fortuna Bell Rose. We focus on the development, um, the base, widening the base, broadening the base. Um, and in the last two years, we've been focusing on broadening that base of jazz so that you have more youngsters playing, more youngsters excited, more people excited, more families excited, ultimately more citizens really excited about the jazz festival. And so we have this little legacy piano that has been left with the School of Music so they can continue the good work that they've been doing in terms of instilling the values and the right culture and attitudes, you know, around music. And so that's why we're here and we're happy to make this presentation. This is one in many that will be coming um, as time rules on. The two entities were also recognized for their participation in the St. Lucia Jazz in collaboration with Jazz at Lincoln Center, each having appeared at major venues for this year's festival. Richard Payne is the director of the St. Lucia School of Music. This is very much a sort of testimony to a strengthening relationship between the St. Lucia School of Music and the events company of St. Lucia. We've had a historical relationship as far as jazz has been concerned. And in this particular case this year, we had a very strong educational component. And so this, again, this is really an example of that strength, strengthening of that relationship. And we look forward to, to, uh, you know, to making it even bigger and better in the, in the future. And of course, our, our thanks remain um, to the government of St. Lucia, which has uh, supported the St. Lucia School of Music in the 31 years of our existence. And we look forward to, it, again, continued support. The ceremony took place on Wednesday, May 22nd, 2019, at the events company St. Lucia headquarters. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Aquayon. I was in my neighborhood. It was a very dark night and I decided to go for a drink by a bar. On my way from the bar, I felt the sting to my right leg. And when I looked back, I knew it was a, a, a full snake. If you happen to be in an area where there are snakes and you are bitten by a snake, this is what you do. You call for help and try to reach the Victoria Hospital within one or three hours. You will be seen immediately. My uncle at the time was a police officer, called the um, Victoria Hospital and told them that we can be known for snake bite. It's the only facility on the island which has a protocol and a treatment plan where you can be treated adequately. We call them before you go there so they can prepare for you. And rest assured that there are adequate supplies of antivenom with doctors who have been trained in the treatment protocols of the snake bite. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquayon. Monsieur, Madame, département qui est responsable pour information à gouvernement cette ci à ce moment-là, à ce GIS, à ce moment-là, à télévision nationale NTN, car vous êtes au Nouvelle Acquéole, vous êtes au Primus Hutchinson. 
Premier Ministre Honorable Alan Chastney et Ministre des Affaires Touristiques Honorable Dominique Ferry, j'ai annoncé le projet touristique en village PIA. Du grand présentation budget pour l'année ici et l'année prochaine, le Premier Ministre Chastney a annoncé le projet ça là pour Gozile, Aslawe et Sofrière. En bas projet village touristique ça là, chaque village qui a porté le thème, ça c'est le thème même, encouragement des bonnes occupations, production naturelle, compagnie, divers cadeaux naturels à parmi l'autre. Le gouvernement a assisté les gens qui sont propriétaires et petits business dans ce village pour hausser les gens qui sont propriétaires et puis l'assistance finance pour placer ces business à une position qui est acceptable pour les étrangers servir les gens qui sont L'assistance finance est en bas de la théorie qui est très bas. Tout ce qui est en bas de la théorie qui pour trouver les essentiels et pour aussi suivre les programme d'étonnement pour assurer que vous suivez même des services service que les hôtels capotent les clients. Le gouvernement a fait possible pour se mettre ces établissements touristiques à la façon yo même pour faire publicité, pour trouver la place, conduire les ventes, services de pratique et management, à faire finance business là. Un village là, un village en cela, le travail qui a fait pour hausser le degré de euh, Placement pour yacht et l'autre bateau gare, rangement nouveau pour ces établissements pour vendre pression, rangement qui fait pour vieux code garde là pour opérer quand il bureau gouvernement et chambre pour trouver information et fondation en même. Restaurant pour offrir manger local, rangement nouveau pour square à parmi l'autre développement. Pays cette lèche, j'ai renouvelé agrément des corporations et puis publics des pays Cuba en secteur santé pour l'autre de l'année. Ambassade de pays Cuba, Alandrio Simon Kasmarin, et ministre de Santé, c'est le Honorable Mary Isaac, si vous avez un argument de coopération et d'attention, c'est pour développer plus toujours le système de santé, c'est le argument de pour renouveler la coopération de santé entre les pays, à supposer l'ONGI, présence, gagner les médecins de pays Cuba qui travaillent à cette ci Ambassade Alandrio Marin promet le commitment du gouvernement. Pour continuer à renforcer les relations et cette ci et pour continuer à pour tuer si pour à façon de santé. Ambassade de la République qui pays qui est très plein pour qu'à assister cette ci à un secteur qui est tellement important qu'on santé et qu'on continue pour renforcer les relations ça là et coopération. Ministre de santé on va Mary Isaac oui merci gouvernement de la République de Cuba pour qu'à continuer et puis si pour pour secteur santé à cette ci le ministre de la Santé a fait une référence pour principalement le programme de santé ZIE. Il m'a dit qu'il a présenté aussi un programme pour procurer les services de santé pour ZIE qui est bien établi. On a Isaac déclaré que Cuba est un frais pour payer cette ci Et si vous avez dit que Félix saint il a aussi remercié le gouvernement et le peuple public de Cuba pour toute assistance qui est pour le promettre cette ci et que j'ai cette ci pour ce lundi qui a passé. Le gouvernement s'est laissé déjà investi en équipement extrait pour aider et improuver les services de santé à l'hôpital Saint-Jude. Par conséquent, les patients à l'hôpital là ont expérimenté des bons bénéfices parce que l'hôpital là a reçu ces machines extraites. Il y a un grand qui est responsable pour l'opération de l'hôpital Saint-Jude, Wayne Harrow, dit qu'il y a une bonne confiance que ces équipements là ont fait possible pour travailler à l'hôpital là pour tuer les meilleurs services de santé pour peuple en face à ce pays. Selon Haro, mon occupement ça là, c'est plus mais qui en pays présentement. Et ça a placé l'hôpital Saint-Jude avec le docteur en position pour une maladie trop primaire et qu'il a traité Jean face à ce pays trop primaire. Il y a l'autre mon occupement, ça c'est un ultrasound qui a eu l'occasion de nos docteurs pour offrir même des services de santé. Le ministre de la Santé, on a Mary Isaac déclaré qu'il il a apprécié si tellement de gros travail là qui se travaille à l'hôpital Saint Jude qu'a fait malgré il a expérimenté si tellement trois casement il comporte yo et puis encouragement comme ces équipements là partait en opération pour avant pour quantité longtemps et que j'ai trouvé un jeu et ce travail là qu'a il s'est utilisé yo à présent madame Isaac fait ce travail à comprendre aussi à présent ces puissances là pas qu'ils ne pour voyager pour juste casser le corps Chef du département pour service X-ray, Chanel saint louis aussi montré gratuitement et dit que mon occupement ça fait bien qu'on se sédium là à l'hôpital là à présent, pour cette main parce qu'il est très nécessaire pour improuver capacité service X-ray. Et merci gouvernement cette ci et promettre que le cas mettre ces équipements là à bon service. Et c'est pour ça nous avons trois nouvelles là, mon cas merci autant pour garder mon cas invitation pour je ne puis encore. 
Donc, si des choses avec la vie, les gens présentent l'autre nouvelle à Kouyola. Après ça, je vais présenter encore Nichelle. Merci, Opil Primus. Et here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. Winds will be blowing from between the east and east-southeast near 20 miles per hour or 31 kilometers per hour with fair to partly cloudy skies with a few brief showers. Weak unstable conditions in the lower atmosphere over the northern Lesser Antilles will bring some showers over that area during the forecast period. A tropical wave located over the eastern tropical Atlantic is moving westward near 15 miles per hour or 24 kilometers per hour. The tide for Castries was low at 12.31 p.m and is high at present. The tide for VFOR Bay was low at 1.58 p.m. and will be high again at 8.12 p.m. The sea is a slight to moderate with waves 3 to 5 feet or 0 0.9 to 1.5 meters. The sun will rise Thursday at 5.35 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.